shaking, people. Okay, so a little story time. Um, it's 1987. I am 19 years old. Just graduated from high school. Um, made an attempt going to college. I went to the University of New Orleans. What? For about for about a semester, and uh, I, I didn't I didn't know what to what to major in. I didn't uh, I had no idea what the fuck. I was doing. Can I help you, Mister? Can I help you? Are you okay? You got it? Huh? I didn't know what to major in. I had no idea what I was doing. I just was taking classes. I was working for this uh, local contractor. Just like he would buy houses that were fucking wrecked, flood or fire or some shit like that, and then just refurbish the entire house, replace the sheetrock, carpet, tile, roof. Whatever. So I was just kind of like, I, didn't, I wasn't as skilled at carpentry. I really sucked at it. Um, but I became a very good painter. I could paint the inside of a house. Okay, none of this is relevant to the story. Okay, so I'm not doing that job anymore. I got a job with a company called Barnes Electric. And basically, I was just the warehouse dude. Like, the electricians would give me a fucking order sheet, and I would give them, you know, the shit they needed for whatever job they were going on. And that was basically all I did. I drove a forklift. Nothing nothing very high-tech. Uh, again, I, I was extremely directionless, but I knew I needed to be working or going to school or both. So, uh, college didn't work out. <clears throat> so, so, I'm working at this place. Now... Still living at home with my parents. I mean, I've only been out of high school a few months. So, I'm going home one day, and I've, I've already purchased my little 1987 Toyota pickup. And I would have to drive through this kind of... It wasn't kind of anything. It was a shitty, crime-infested, shithole neighborhood. It was a Section 8 housing that was notorious for murders and carjackings and muggings and shit along those lines. Not, not, not a great place to be. <clears throat> but I could shave like five minutes off of my 11 minute commute <clears throat> wow so I would drive through this shitty area on my way home from work uh, so one day cruising along uh, there's a van in front of me was it a minivan no it was a regular like 80s full-size van white and, um, I can't tell who's in it. All I know is, chick blows the stop sign like it ain't even there. And I was like, woof, that was, and I see a car coming. I mean, he's hauling fucking ass, yo. Bam! Hits the van. The van immediately rolls on its side, and the car just keeps driving and pins it up against a telephone pole. Which had a transformer on it. Initially, none of these things meant anything to me. All I know was I just saw somebody get fucking plowed. The van is now on its side. People have got to be trapped. And this is a terrible neighborhood. The likelihood that some good Samaritan was going to come by, see the crash, <laughs> and be like, yeah, let me help out. No, she was probably going to get fucking robbed. So, I, I, I make a quick right. I park basically in the middle of the street. I get out. I fucking run over, I climb up on the thing, and it's a boy who's about, I don't know, eight or nine, and then the mom. So it's, it was, you know what, I'm sorry. Hit it from the blind side. Because when it flipped, she was on the bottom, and the boy was on top. Okay, so the other direction, sorry. Just trying to give y'all a good visual here. So the van is now on its side. Not upside down, but on its side, and smashed up against a fucking electrical pole. Okay. I, at this, I'm 19 years old. I'm not like a, a rescue fucking wizard. I'm not a fireman. I'm not a cop. I'm not an EM. I'm nothing. I'm just a dude trying to get home from his goofy little job in his little 87 Toyota pickup. That's all I am. But <clears throat> I saw this and I thought that I could help. So I 
park right in the middle of the fucking street, stopping traffic like I'm a cop. Stop! I run over, I climb up, and it, she's fucking... Now, I smell gasoline, okay? I don't know. Probably just a fuel line. Pop loose or something. Ga gas tanks don't just come apart. So, I could smell gas. which It was... She could really smell it because it was, I guess, where she was, it was like dripping. So she is freaking, I mean, when I tell you she was in shock, spazzing the fuck out. Like, you gotta get my baby. We're gonna burn alive. We're gonna die. I was like, lady, lady, this is, this is, settle down. Well, I'm, you know, I'm looking, I'm hanging into the window. I'm like, miss, settle down. You gotta get my baby. We're gonna die. I was like, okay, what's your name? My name is Lynn. You gotta get my baby. I was like, Okay, Lynn, I need you to settle down. You're not going to blow up. Okay, you smell gasoline, but that's just because a little bit of it leaked when your van flipped over. You're not going to blow up. That only happens in the movies. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, you got to get these people out of here. This thing is going to blow the fuck up. And you are going to get launched in the space. So the kid was pretty calm. He was like, kind of fucked up he's looking at me i mean when you're in that position what do you do you someone's trying to help you you got no choice you gotta listen so i was like all right little buddy stay with me what's your name joseph all right joseph here's what i need you to do now okay i need you to be very still i'm gonna take out a pocket knife and i'm gonna cut through your seatbelt. you just hang on to my arm but don't move don't Spaz out. Don't try to crawl out before I tell you, okay? I'm going to pull you out. You, I just need you to not move right now so I can cut this seatbelt. And I didn't have a great pocket knife. I wasn't like a knife enthusiast at that point in my life yet. <clears throat> that comes on later in the 90s. But I take out my little shitty knife, and I'm carving through a seatbelt. Have you ever tried to cut a seatbelt? Holy fucking Christ. Well, they're very strong and durable for a reason because, you know, they're protecting you. <laughs> protecting your life with this harnessing device <laughs> so so I cut it I get him I'm like just hang on I'll pull you out so I pull him out I'm like now listen I'm gonna pull you all the way out I'm gonna climb down with you I need you to just go by my truck and just sit there or better yet go in my truck and just sit there and don't don't move see so you are about to get it boy can you stop walking on my damn on top of everything, please. And why are your foot pads so irritated? What are you doing? Stepping in ant piles? Probably. Okay. So I get the boy out. I make sure he does what I tell him to do and he goes in my truck. I'm like, stay there. Z stay. So he stays. The lady's like, don't worry about me. It's gonna blow. It's gonna I was like, listen, Len, is that your name? Settle down. Nothing is gonna blow up. I'm telling you, gasoline does not just explode like that for no reason. Well, there was a very good reason it might have blown up because the fucking transformer was busted loose and it's sparking and I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, I do not wanna be it in the newspaper because I got blown up at a fucking traffic accident. So I'm trying in my head you know, I'm, I don't have any fucking formal training. I, I don't know. I'm just, a, I'm just a dude, right? I'm like, how am I going to get this lady out of Biscuit? Boy, I'm going to tell you what. If you knock over Nelson, we're going to have words. Okay. I'm like, how am I going to get this lady out? Of, she's at the bottom. She's like on the floor, jammed in. There's no way I'm going to cut her seatbelt and pull her fucking ass out like I just did this eight-year-old kid so I'm like all right this is all right so what to do next is just rolling through my head at the speed of light I said here's what I need to do I need to just keep this woman calm keep her from having a stroke or a heart attack at the thought of her van exploding so I just got to keep her calm until a fucking fireman or a cop something's gonna show up here eventually at least I hope so 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 I was in, I was hanging down in the window and I was just holding, I was just holding her hand. I didn't know what else to do. Cutting the seatbelt wasn't gonna work because I think she was like crunched under the 
fucking steering column and shit, there was no way she was going to get out. So I was like, listen, I was like hanging. So I'm hanging through the passenger window. There's busted glass, gasoline everywhere, a transformer that's sparking. I'm like, this is either going to be a very good story one day or this is going to be how it ends for me. And I'm going to blow up in this van with this hysterical woman. But I didn't leave. I stayed there. And uh, <clears throat> paramedics showed up, fire, fire department, fire truck. Fireman comes over. He's like, what's going on? Are you okay? I'm like, dude, I'm fine. I got her kid out. I, I don't, but I'm, my, my skill level is, is peaked here. I have no idea how to get this. She's like, don't, we'll, we'll get her out. You just get back and get yourself safe. I'm like, all right. So I crawl out, firemen come in and you know, they eventually get her out of there. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, th I don't know that that thing would have blown up, but it definitely would have caught on fire had we had to stay there for another couple of minutes. Um... But, it, but what I told her was partially true. Vehicles, when they get hit, don't typically just explode like they do in the movies. It just, the, the science isn't there. You don't, it just doesn't happen. You don't see like a giant explosion, usually. Um, so, <clears throat> I kept her as calm as I could. The professionals showed up, got her out. I just stayed with her son in my truck until she was able to get cleared by the EMTs and whatnot and um yeah and I, there was just a crowd of people around us like just I think they were just in shock of what they saw and then they s see me crawling in there like I'm fucking like I'm a superhero I, I was like whatever man what am I supposed to do just keep driving and no well then it dawned on me, stupid, you were laying, you were in the window for like 10 minutes. Somebody could have took the kid, somebody came and shot me, I don't know. I don't think carjackers fucking typically jack cars, they can't, they can't fucking drive away, so I felt pretty good. Am I making a video call right now? Who's calling me? If I could spell promise, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, we're gonna be fine. We'll be fine. Hey, you know. You know what's up. You okay. I lost my train of thought. Okay, so <clears throat> fire trucks show up, police, paramedics, people who are trained professionally on how to extract people from a vehicle that's been turned on its side and smashed up against a telephone pole and may or may not blow up in a few minutes. So, professionals got there. I, I gave a little synopsis of what I saw to the cops for their fucking incident report or whatever. And, um, so yeah, so that was the, that was the first time I pulled somebody from a crashed vehicle in the middle of the street. It, it happened a second time in San Diego. N it was different. It was. <laughs> it wasn't this on, on the one in San Diego though. It was on like a interstate on ramp, and there was a collision. I didn't see it. I just heard. I was like, "What the fuck?" From my apartment, and I look, and a car is upside down this time. Okay, completely upside down. Wheels, top, roof on 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 the fucking asphalt. I was like, holy shit! So, I mean, what do I do? Do I call 911? No, of course not. Because I'm fucking, I think I'm fucking Spider-Man or whatever. So, I jump over the fence, I run over. At the time I was living with my girlfriend. Yeah. I run over. I'm looking, I'm looking. I don't know what I'm looking for. Again, I'm not fucking... This is before I worked with Customs. It was the early 90s. This was 90... I want to see 93 or 94. 
I hadn't quite developed the skill set that I have now or that I get a few years later, but I, I had to do something. I don't know what I thought I was going to do. <clears throat> so I run over. The car's upside down. So I'm laying, the back windshield's completely blown out. And I see somebody in the back seat. So I'm laying there and I'm like, hey, hey, hey you, are you okay? She's like, I don't know. I mean, she, you know, you're in a car that's upside down now. So no, you're not okay. You're freaking the fuck out. So she's in the back seat. I don't see anybody in the front seat. So I'm like, where is the driver? I'm thinking somebody got launched from the vehicle and is like laying up on a hill somewhere. She's like, what, what, what driver? Where's the other person? You're in the back seat. Where, who was in the front seat? She goes, I was in the front seat. I'm like, how the fuck did you get in? Never mind. It's not important. Details of how you wound up in the back seat in a vehicle that's now crashing upside down. Not very important right now. So I'm laying in just this puddle of broken glass. Literally, I'm laying in broken glass and I'm hanging on. There, I, just, I couldn't do anything. I wasn't just going to drag her out and hurt her even more. So I'm just laying there, right? Glass all over, stuck to my face. I'm just like, I was just telling her to calm down. I said, listen, people have already called 911. They're coming. Fire truck's coming. Cops are coming. You're going to be out of here fast. Just don't stroke out. You're going to be fine. I didn't know she was going to be fine. What am I? A fucking doctor? No, I have no idea. So I'm laying there. Cops, same thing. Firemen, EMT, <laughs> they run over. And they're like, sir, are you okay? I'm like, I'm not in the crash. I'm just, uh, I'm just a bystander. I was just trying to keep her calm until you arrived. And he was like, okay, thanks. We got it. Come on, get out. So I'm like, crawling out broken glass all over my shirt it's like stuck in my arms i'm like bleeding from weird places i get back to the apartment and my girlfriend's like mm, let me guess you crawled into the you crawled <laughs> through on the ground in through a broken out window trying to fucking save somebody like you know what you're doing i'm like yep that's what I did. <laughs> She's going to be fine, though, because, you know, firemen showed up and paramedics are on it. Um, so the professionals are there. She's like, you're a fucking mess. Look at you. That glass all over. Are you out of your mind right now? Stop messing with Nelson. Stop, fool. What's wrong with you? Fucking biscuit. Um, so that one wasn't as dramatic because there wasn't a uh, gas transformer in a crackhead shit stained crime infested neighborhood it was it didn't have all those elements attached to it but it was still kind of crazy the whole windshield was just blown completely out i still don't know obviously she was not wearing a seatbelt. i don't, can't but the chain of events that have to happen for someone to be driving and then the vehicle's upside down and they are now ejected into the back seat i don't know how the physics work on that to, to be honest, I, I, I never did figure it out, but, um, so those were the two times I, <laughs> I thought I was Batman or Spider-Man or Iron Man and took it upon myself to inject myself into a situation that I really had no business being a part of, but just what I do, man. So anyhow, I thought that was, I thought those were interesting stories. I don't know that I've ever told them before. Um, people that know me probably heard those. I don't know. It, they're weird. Um, I never did talk to any of those people again, ever. I'm sure they're fine now. I, I'm sure they won't forget that little incident. Incident, is that a word? Incident? Yeah, incident report. Yeah, uh, I'm sure they won't forget it. But, all right. I hope, sorry about my last video, it was 26 seconds long. But you saw, it was raining on my head, so I had to come inside. Everybody have a great Monday. I fucking love y'all. Hope you enjoyed story time with Troy. Um, if that was mildly interesting or entertaining, then I'll, I've, I've got an endless number of stories to share with people of weird things like that that have happened. I did have another rescue mission it didn't involve a crash, but my boss was um, a blizzard hit in her mountain house, Palomar Mountains. 
and she was trapped for like three days. And the professional uh, extraction rescue team said it was too dangerous for them to go and try to get anybody out. So of course I went and got her. That, that, that story, I, I don't have time to tell right now. It's very long and very detailed and pretty fucking intense. <laughs> Um, and there's an element to it that made it, made it even more insane after the fact. Um, my boss that I wound up rescuing from her house that was six feet under snow was pregnant. And I didn't know. I had no idea. So now her, she tells that story to her son, like, I don't know, every couple of months. He's like, Ma, tell me what happened again. So, anyhow, that, that, I'll, I'll give the details of that story. If y'all are interested, if not, if I just bored you to fucking tears with, with a silly story that... Just, it's too crazy to sound real. Trust me, it, it's real. It really happened. It was exactly the way I just said it. Um, but yeah, everybody have a great Monday. And um, drive safe. Try not to get in a T-boned in a fucking intersection and be in a vehicle that's flipped upside down and, and possibly on fire. Try not to do that. And your day will be fine. All right, everybody. Till my next video. Y'all know what's up. Everybody stay cool. Peace. I'm out.